Aaron, you mentioned a lot about items being a big deal in Chinese Dota. The Dota Asian Championships are happening right now. In that compendium, there is a question that stands out to me as being very concerning, <laughs> and it's, did you buy this compendium for items? Well, there, I don't know, like, basically you either say yes or you're a liar. Um, <laughs> that's how that works. And, and I did say yes because I bought <laughs> yeah. that knowing that I would get treasures for leveling up. I bought compendium points to boost me to 50 so that every mm-hmm. level I would get more treasures. Ever, as, as time goes on, I'm starting to realize that I'm buying esports tickets for items. I bought the Canada Cup specifically to get Bearski. I watched two games, and I was totally happy. Yep. That's a. I feel like that's a problem. It is. And I it's... know that a lot of people won't necessarily agree, but I feel like buying into an esports event, you know, especially if you're contributing to the pool, specifically to get items, you know, you, your heart being in the right place doesn't matter. They still get that money, but right. at the same time, I feel like there has to be another way to get people enthusiastic about increasing a prize pool, about getting more involved in these kinds of events right. than items. Well, there, there's good and bad here. The good, as you said, is it's irrelevant in a lot of ways, whether they're buying a ticket for the ticket itself or for the item. Um, the experience of D2L Season 5 showed me, showed anyone who cared to pay attention, the value of that. Our void item never went in, and still, I still know, have no idea why. Um, just never went in, and I think it has something to do with their new particle system. They're building a particle exporter or something like that, again, beyond my, my ken to comment <laughs> on. But um, it never went in, and we sold next to nothing. And then you you take a look at what's going on with, like, Star Ladder right now. Um, I don't know if you guys saw what they're planning to do with their next season. I actually knew about this ahead of time, and, of course, I'm going to keep it private, even though I kind of caught wind of it. Their next ticket's going to have six bundles. Six. Whoa. Okay, so... What did they have last time? They had the I'm going to buy every single one of them. They had the Lich set no, and they had the I, Tiny set. I think, the, I think the ticket comes with all six. Like oh, I could be wrong here, Like, but I think Holy it does. Crap. That or they're going to sell each bundle individually and then still attach a ticket to it. But okay. we'll come back to that. And the guy, and they're going to be awesome bundles. I got a preview of one. Um, the guy who did them is actually a, a good friend of mine. He's Manny, and he, he lives in the Bay here, and he's just a phenomenal artist. He's done some of the sets for us, too. So plug there. Check him out. You'll like him. Um, but the, the, good, uh, the good of this kind of a system is, is thus. The the item sets give people a reason to want to spend their money outside of wanting to support the tournament. Once so, even if they're not so big in esports that they are willing to, to donate in their brain, you know, four ninety nine or nine ninety nine, if they can pay that, get something that makes them happy legitimately, then they can also feel good about supporting the tournament, even if that's not the reason they bought in. And just like everything in most mass media and in esports in general, it's all about critical mass. So many people buy. They talk about how happy they are with their buying experience. More people buy. They get involved. And you have this huge cadre of people that are super happy and feel like they're a part of this tournament. They're a part of almost a section of the community that supports this tournament. And it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds hype and it builds everything else. It's why the international is what it is. It's why it functions the way it functions. Is There's no better event in the world, in my opinion, to buy into that way. But you also see it with tournaments in particular like the Summit. Um, like the Summit, too, was phenomenal. And they had so much community support. XMG captains draft very much. On that mm-hmm. same, uh, on that same boat and everything. That's the Dota Cinema one, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and you know, <clears throat> great people behind all of them. Amazing, amazing cast, amazing games for the most part. And so you have that's the good. That's that that the issue is. I refuse to believe that this is the one the one piece of media in the world that doesn't have a saturation point in terms of in terms of what its users are willing to give. Like that's not reality. At what point do we hit that? At what point, especially now with Star Ladder upping the ante. And we we kind of expected this, and by we, I mean us at the D2L and Good Game, that we were going to start to see this. We were talking about this six months ago, um, you know, around the time of TI, what's going to happen, the value of items, and so on. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the with them upping the ante like this and so many coming in, now this forces most tournaments, if they want to be perceived the same way, to try to keep pace, even if it's not to the level of six. But now we all want to give away more items. We all want to do this. And at some point, this market's going to get flooded. Like, I have a set for pretty much every hero that you can have a set for right now. How's your Jakiro set? My TA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, you know, it, it, there's still room to expand in that way, I suppose. Give me but, AA sets. <laughs> oh, I know. But um, I love AA. But, um, but, yeah, like, at what point do people just get sick of seeing sets? And who's going to be – and there, there's going to be some picking and choosing of winners and losers here. Like, if you've got eight tournaments that all go in and go, we've got six sets each, and Valve goes, we can only implement 
half of those. Who chooses which tournaments go in and which don't? Valve, and that's fine. But that's a position I know they're not comfortable in. They don't want to be in that position. They want it to be the Wild West. But now they're beginning to be to hit the wall in terms of manpower, which I think has a lot to do with why our item didn't go in. And I don't think it was vindictive. I don't think it was um, it was anything other than just sometimes things get sideways. Sometimes things get backed up, and unfortunately the timing for us was poor, and we suffered because of it. So, but the when you look at what drives not just these tournaments in general, their profit margins, their growth, um, viewership, et cetera. Viewership in particular, it's item gambling, man. Like the the item gambling is driving not just Dota, but CSGO and any other any other game that's basically in, in the, the Valve ecosystem right now. Those are the two big ones. I've never gotten into any of that, and I don't want to. But in any game I go in and I see the chat, they're talking about like how many rares are bet on yep. this. I'm like, oh, man. Like people are into this. They'll but pay significant amounts of money. We, because of some scheduling issues we have with D2L, we ran into some situations where we would have two matches scheduled, and or say one match scheduled for a night, and then last minute a Chinese team or Ace would get in touch with, we can't do this tonight, or we have to do, or we can't play tomorrow, but we can't play tonight. We'd be like, well, we got to work with this, so we would go, and we got some very interesting side by side data points, um, namely, like teams of a similar tier that played in very similar time slots, you know. Um, would the, the the match that was on the the item betting website would pull twice the viewership of the match that wasn't, even though most other variables were almost identical. So and it, it and it, it gave us so much information just to observe that and to see it. And of course, you know, it's something we would have hoped to avoid it with more stable schedules, but that's becoming a pipe dream because of how completely crushed everyone is with scheduling issues. But yeah, what's uh, the the concern to me? is if we get into this race, tournament organizers get into this race of uh, who can give away the most. Eventually, people are going to get sick of it. The, you know, the, There's only so many tickets they're going to buy and get a gajillion sets. You know, how many sets for gyrocopter can you have? <laughs> you know, how many, um, how, you know, and, what, and everyone's doing the same thing because I, I guarantee you, they think about it the same way we do. We go to the list of the most played heroes that month and go, there's a, there's a hero that has had a set in a yep. while, let's make one. And then suddenly... You know, three, four people are making sets at once. Valve goes, no, we don't want that set because we've already got this in the pipeline. And then it just resets a few months later. So the same heroes are getting pounded with sets. That's why so many heroes that are near the top of that list have always had and will always have a huge lead. Nature's Profit's a perfect example. Can't tell you how many Doom sets I have. I don't even play Doom. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. I I don't know how much it costs to have a set made, but if if everyone, if the big big boys can offer six sets and you can afford to make one – is that a problem as well? Well, I I don't handle that side of negotiations. Mostly, it's it's split, it's ref split. But that's like that's my question here too. Is and you know uh, I know enough of the item creators to know some of the the concerns they have. Like I feel like the perception is like, oh, <clears throat> we'll just go get an item creator because we have a fairly decent tournament, or maybe it's a big tournament, maybe it's the next summit. We're gonna go get. Um, our item creator and be like, oh, you know, we're going to go handpick them and be like, make this awesome set. And they're going to make this set and we're going to make a gajillion dollars. It's all on delay. These sets take longer than a week to turn out. You know, they take at least a month, sometimes more to really get everything right, especially if they're a very elaborate set and all this. So that's not as easy as I think people assume it is to go to a big name like TV Dota or to go to a Nuxie or to go to Manny, for example, and be like, yeah, so why don't you invest three or four months of your life with no guaranteed payment on commission? to do four sets for us like that's with sets that may or may not even make it in right Mm. right exactly and so it's it's very again tumultuous is the word there there are a lot of moving pieces to all this to concern me and like i totally support Vlad and what he's doing with star ladder he wants to be the one who pushes that envelope why wouldn't he why wouldn't he be the one that's ready to up the ante he hired on amazing talent manny and yes it forces us it's not it's not about that it's about a long-term view like, a, what about TI5? Are we going to do a whole crap ton of Immortals again and and hope that it pays out? Will it pay out? Will we hit that threshold? What, you know, what are the consequences of it? Like, if we exceed and we go to 20 million rays for TI5, what does that do so far as expectations versus reality of terms of the money that's involved just because one event is pulling this much because it has this much attention? Or what happens to the community's head of steam? What happens to the, the passion and the interest when maybe we pull 8.8 million this year like like what's the is that realistically something that is on the table could that happen and what's that going to do to sponsor perception what's that going to do to team interest what's that going to do to organizations who are dumping all of this on the on the expectation that we're always going to be on a straight line up and then maybe we flag a little like what happens then and it's scary it's still an amazing game still an amazing community if there's any community that can get through all of this it's a dota community but there are concerns 
Do you think that that saturation point hasn't been reached yet because there's this influx, of, this constant influx of players from massively populated areas like China and, and South America? Uh, the thing is, the money that comes in from cosmetics, the majority doesn't go back into their, our community. Like, it just doesn't. Valve takes the lion's share of it for the most part. Mm. That's fine. It's their game, their infrastructure. They invest in it. I'm not judging, not complaining. But it's, you know, you say, you see, I mean, just look at TI. $10 million, but that's actually closer to $30 million that was raised. So as much as that was raised, and it went back out to the players in general, and, you know, there's always situations with splits with teams and all that, even though that's becoming less common now and everything else. But the... A wildly successful event doesn't make as much money as I think people assume it does, um, especially when you factor in like, like I mean, again, the summit too was an amazing event. I'm sure they did very well, and their brand is only getting stronger. And, and I, I know LD and God's well enough to know that they're they're as bright and as savvy as guys as as I've I've ever met. So they're they're going to be fine, but. When you look at the amount of money, it's like you get wrapped up in these big figures, but it's like, okay, so we're giving this much of the prize pool and all this. What's actually the margin here? Like, if you're running a three month tournament with the land that costs 300 grand to fly everyone in, to house them, to feed them, and everything else, then a huge portion of of your proceeds, what you do get from the ticket sales, are going into prize pool to get that number big enough to make the community cheer. Where's your profit? Like, the profit, and especially, you know, for these productions that involve dozens of people or, you know, involve. Um, you know, huge production. Like it's, I, I, I don't know enough about it. Hell, I don't know enough about our numbers, let alone anyone <laughs> else's to really get into an in-depth conversation about that. But it is, again, it's an issue of perception versus reality. And it's always, it's worrisome to me as a guy who came from StarCraft originally, that maybe there's going to be not necessarily a crash or a dying or anything like that, but pe- things stumble sometimes. And how's that going to affect people who are right now hinging everything on the idea that t- the Dota is always going to continue to grow? There's going to come a point where we level off, and maybe we level off and go up again. I don't think we're anywhere near a point where we're going to level off and go down. But it, it's a mistake for the community and players and organizations to not have these things at the forefront of their mind now so you prepare and you recognize what the dangers are, how best you can avoid them, and for especially the business owners, for the tournament organizers, for teams, how best to secure your future in this space because it can come and it can go very, very quickly. Interesting times, man. Yep. Yep. Dota's weird right now. It is. But it's I odd. S- still like it. Still think Dota's pretty still good, though. Night. Still going to play it today. <laughs> uh, I'll play Dota tonight. Yeah. I could probably do that. Uh, any parting thoughts, anybody, as before we go? Do we hit it all? Do you think TI5 will hit 11 million, James? Uh... I'm, I'm not sure. Like, that, actually, what you're saying is that it occurred to me earlier today. I was like, like the what, fact what, that it what, what if it happens? What if it doesn't? Yeah. Yep. And that's that's yeah, like you said, it's not scary, but it's just it's just the it's concerning. Yeah. Like, uh, I would say like we, our audience doesn't particularly like care about like a lot of IGN audience does not care about MOBAs, and we we know that. Yeah. But but we're here for but, you. But but <laughs> when, when when that article comes you out, you do when that article comes out comes out every year, and people are like. Oh, Holy crap! Ten million dollars. Yeah, right. that twenty million viewers. Yeah, for like for for at least for our audience and the people that care, like certain things. Like, okay, this is what's interesting. This is like now it becomes a thing, and we saw that with uh, even with Smite recently, where they they yeah. had, their, they had, a, they had a two and a half to two point six million dollar price pool. Yeah, by the That's time absurd. you hear this, I would yeah. assume that Dota Asian Championships are up to two mil. It's up to two million. Almost uh, by mm-hmm. the time this episode episode yeah. goes live, I'd bet it is. Oh yeah. And so, and so people, ca- right people care about the number, and so yeah, when it doesn't, then like, okay, where, where do we write that headline? Or it's like, are they reach sure. this amount if of money? it doesn't reach the yeah. same, like, is that a weakness? Is it failing, or is it just like a perceived failing? Right, or is it well, just what well, it is? It, well, it's it's the grand worry of crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is all about momentum. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's you can talk about it's like, oh, we're we have a great product, we have a great service we're going to offer, but the the way that you get the person to give you four dollars or five dollars or twenty dollars that normally wouldn't is when they see other people, so many other people jumping on board, and they want to be a part of it too. And that's the danger in the in the business model as it exists. We've continued to grow and grow and grow. What happens when eventually that takes a breath? Like, did, does that momentum flag? Does the interest, the willingness to spend money, does that continue to does, – does that go down as well? And, yeah, I, I, I hope not. And, like I said, uh, if there's anything the last few years have taught me, 
as vitriolic and venomous as some of the some of the members can be, the Dota community still is the best in the world, and um, I owe everything to them and to uh, to the, that game and Ice Frog, and so they've got my unwavering support, and I have no doubt that they're going to find a way to navigate it. It's Valve after all. Shout out Ice Frog. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure he's watching. I'm sure he's like, yeah, yeah. you yeah, see, I got nice. you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. Pleasure, yeah. my friend. Aaron Chambers, thank you. thank you so much for stopping by. Dude, how often can I be in? I'm literally... You want to come by any time, man. Like, if you, you want to do this every week. walks away. Yeah, exactly. I thought, thought we were around the corner, but... Yeah, not, not quite. quite. <laughs> my directions were fun. not very good. I'm no, sorry. No, it's actually my fault for, for uh, making an assumption and making an ass out of you and Umption. But, <laughs> um, but anyway, yes, any time. If you guys want to do this every week, I'd love to be in. Awesome. We'd yeah, be happy to have you. We'll probably be talking a little more. It's just you have this this perspective that we don't get to see. And so yeah. when I hear you talk about it, I'm just like, yes, yeah, tell me yeah, more. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> uh, you can find James, Brian, and I on IGN.com, and you can subscribe to this podcast on YouTube.com slash IGN Arena. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Search mm-hmm. IGN Arena on Facebook. Find that Facebook group. Brian is at Albino Albert on Twitter. I am at Mitchie D. James is at James underscore Faulkner. Yeah. Aaron is at A-C-A-Y-E-S-E-E. Where can you we find it. you? What are you doing? What do you want to promote? Share uh, tw- us your goods. Twitter's good. Twitter's always good. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and elsewhere under ACTV if you're interested in the D2L. Um, of course, it's twitch.tv mm-hmm. slash D2L. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, good game agency. Good agency. I don't think we have any so- official social media to promote right now. But, yeah, hope to see you in the stream. At Twitch. At Twitch, exactly. There you go. Just Follow check Twitch. out at Twitch. You haven't heard of it. Amazon, small company. <laughs> Maybe you've gotten some things from there. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I bet pleasure, we'll see man. you back on Arena, on IGN Arena real soon. Love to, man. There will be a separate league thing something, something this week. Um, yeah, for those who are paranoid about uh, this just being an all-Dota show for, <laughs> forever, don't worry. We'll get back to normal broadcasting very soon. But it was a special episode with Aaron, so we had to talk a lot of Dota. Appreciate lots it, going on. Lots to talk about, obviously. Uh, please come back soon. I will. I already miss you. All right. Thanks, <laughs> you guys. thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for see you.